Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss uh, Form 2, Chapter 6 questions. Uh, three dimensional geometrical shapes, whereby we need to find the volume of the shapes given. So this is considered a hot question because we need to apply uh, what we have learned in Form 1 as well. Now let's look at the question. The diagram shows a piece of engineering design, which is a metal cuboid. Uh, with a um, hole of the shape of regular hexagonal prism in the middle of the solid. So we need to find the volume of the metal solid. So how do we find? Okay, to find the volume, we just need to take the volume of the cuboid and then minus the volume of the uh, hexagonal prism, the hole uh, in the middle, because that is the part that we take it out. So how do we find the volume of the cube boy? We just take the length times the width times the height. So 20 times 32, and the height is 24. And generally, uh, the volume of the prism is the cross-sectional area times with the height or depth. In this case, the cross-sectional shape is a regular hexagon. So area of hexagon times with the height yeah, or the depth of this this shape, which is 32. So let's use calculator and find out what is 20 times 32 times 24, which give us 15,360 cubic millimeter. And the area of hexagon times the height, the height is 32, but the area of the hexagon, we have to, uh, we do not have a formula to it. All right, so, but we know that the area of the hexagon is actually consists of two uh, trapezium. However, we only know the length of this diagonal, which is 16, but we do not know the, the other side, uh, the sides of the regular hexagon, and we do not know the perpendicular height between these two parallel sides. So in this case, we need to find out the uh, the perpendicular distance, or we got to change our strategy to find the area of the uh, regular hexagon. Now, therefore, let's just focus on that uh, hexagon. It is not just any hexagon, it's regular hexagon. So that means uh, for this regular hexagon, okay, what do we know about it? We know that all sides are equal in length. Okay, and if we join the diagonal, this is the one that we have, which is 16. And if we join all the diagonals, we will notice that the diagonals will actually intersect in the center of the uh, uh, hexagon. And if this one, okay, they're all, the diagonal are bisecting each other, and we know the diagonal is actually 16. So when we bisect it, that will be eight. Okay, so they are at the equal distance from the center. So this is eight as well. And the angle in the center is equally divided into six parts. So all of those are equal in size. So we just take 360 divided by six parts, six triangle here. So each will take 60 degree. Now, since these two are uh, equal in length, it's like a uh, isosceles triangle. So we use the total interior angle of the triangle. We notice that this is also 60, which gives us an equilateral triangle. So if this is A, the side is A, so this will be 8 as well. All this will be 8. So to find the area of this hexagon, Okay, area of this hexagon, we just take two, uh, we just take six uh, times the area of this small equilateral triangle. So to find the area of equilateral triangle, we need to have perpendicular height. So we need to find this one. So let me just take this triangle out. Okay. Right, whereby the hypotenuse is actually eight, and this is four because the uh, axis of symmetry it would divide these two 
um, these two into, I mean, this triangle into two equal parts. So 8 cm, after you divide into two, that will be four. So this will be the perpendicular height that we want to find. And let's just label it as T. So to find the area of the whole hexagon, we just take six times of this area of the triangle, the small triangle. So six times half times the base times the height. The base is eight. And height is the one that we need to find. So we label it as T. So let's find what is T. So based on this, we apply what we have learned in Form 1, Pythagoras theorem. So T will equals to 8 squared minus 4 squared. Okay, because according to Pythagoras theorem, the square, the sum of the square of the two shorter sides give us the square of the hypotenuse. So we just take 64 minus 16 and then find the square root of it we got square root of 48. So t is square root of 48, just put into this formula. Okay, and simplify at the same time if we can. So we have three times eight, 24, and we replace the t with third 48, square root of 48. Yeah? So therefore the area of the hexagon is found, which is this, now, no need to change to decimal point yet. We shall just put this one into the main framework, which is, because this is just um, you know, like a detour to find what is the area of the hexagon. After we got that, we have to put into our main equation over here. So, which give us 15,360, okay. Minus the area of the hexagon, 24, third 48 times with 32. So for this one, we use the calculator, then we will get 24 times square root of 48, and then times with 32. So we have 5,320.86. So after we minus from 15,000, 360, our answer is 10,039.14. Our unit will be cubic millimeter. Okay, so that is our answer for this question, part A. Eh? We just found the answer for part A. All right. Okay, now the next part will be if one cubic cm of iron has a mass of 7.874 gram, we need to find the mass of iron required to make the solid. Now we know that to make the solid, we need a 10,039.14 cubic millimeter. But the information given here is one cubic centimeter equivalent to 7.874 gram. So this is the volume. Okay, this is the volume and the equivalent mass is given. But this volume is not millimeter. It is a cubic centimeter. So we need to change uh, this one into cubic centimeter. So how do we change? So this one, we need uh, to use the concept of ratio and proportion. So the ratio and proportion says that this one, uh, we go to back to the basic conversion of the unit. 1 cm equivalent to 10 mm. So if we want to find cubic centimeter, that means we cube the left-hand side and we cube the right-hand side at the same time. Then we will get 1 cubic centimeter. So 10 after you cube it, that means you times 10 uh, for three times. Huh? So it will be 1,000 cubic millimeter. So the factor of one cubic centimeter is 1,000 cubic millimeter. So now I have 10,039.14 cubic millimeter. How do I get back in centimeter? So it's small units change to big units. We need to uh, divide the factor of 1,000. Okay, therefore... 
and 39.14 cubic millimeter. We divide 1000, okay? And that will give us centimeter, cubic centimeter, okay? So let's find out what is that. So this one, after we uh, divide by 1000, we have 10.03914 cubic millimeter. Uh, sorry, cubic centimeter. So for that cubic centimeter, every one cubic centimeter is 7.874 7, uh, 7, gram. So we just take 10.03914 times 7.874 7, gram. Okay. 10.03914. Three nine one four times seven point eight seven four grams. So we will have seventy nine. Uh, let's round off. Huh? Point zero four eight two four decimal places gram. Now we can even round it off to seventy nine point zero. Oh, since it's it was given three decimal places. Just leave it in three decimal places then. Four, eight. Okay, grand. So that will be the answer for the solution. Okay, I think that's it for this one. All right, thank you so much.